Here, I intend to show a more graphical representation of how absorption really goes in our body, but in a version that is more detailed than what I did previously. So if you haven't watched what I did previously yet, let me show you that. In my overview of pharmacokinetics, I just showed that absorption is basically going from the site of administration, usually the GI tract, to our blood. So this is it for this overview. But of course, that is not the only thing that we should imagine if we are to know more about the absorption process for drug molecules. So here is a more detailed account of that. Do take note that the right side is more of the distribution part already. So I intend to cover this area in a separate recording. So the left side is more of what we need to look at here. So for us to have an orientation of where we should look at, just take note that we should focus first on the upper left side, which is here, and then we move forward. Of course, we have barriers here drawn as white lines. So to go from one to another and going through this line means you're going to have to pass through membranes. So we know that our starting point is the site of administration. And again, just for extra emphasis, it's usually the GI tract because most of the drugs we take are taken orally, like tablets and capsules and other dosage forms. So first we need to remember we have our drug molecules already in solution form. We have them existing as separate single molecules right here. And they can exist again in two forms. They could have no charge, they can be an ionized, or they could have a charge that is ionized. Uh, take note, positive is not the only charge that is acceptable. Again, it will depend. If you remember from our previous discussions, it can be ionized positive for weak bases or negative for weak acids. But remember this, regardless of whether the charge is positive or negative, as long as there's a charge, we recall that they cannot pass through membranes. And ionized versions are the only ones that can pass through membranes. Okay, so just like what I said, you can see here that for the rest of the figure, as long as I have these dots with charges, so that would suggest ionized molecules, they have, we, well, the assumption is they have little to no chance of passing through barriers. Like here, right? Here, see this? Also this one, okay? Also this one. So that's the trend, right? And the only molecules that can pass through from membrane to, uh, the, from membrane, to membrane are the unionized versions. So now, where could our unionized molecules go from the starting point? Well, of course, ideally, we want to fulfill the definition of absorption, which is to go to the bloodstream. So, well, if everything was so simple, all we should be looking at is this single arrow where we go from the site of administration to the blood and the story is over. Well, okay, it's not as simple because we can see that some of the ionized molecules could actually go through the liver. Strictly speaking, we cannot choose where our drug molecules will go. Will you go straight to the blood or you will, will you go through the liver first? Because remember, the blood is something that circulates throughout our entire body. It is inevitable that we will have, in fact, a lot of drug molecules, especially from the GA tract, that have to be passed on anatomically to the liver before going to the rest of our blood vessels. Well, what would that mean? If we remember, the liver is the main site for metabolism. And usually metabolism is a way of eliminating drug activity. So this is a kind of a problem because if we have molecules that go to the liver first before going to the general or the systemic circulation, some of them may fall victim to the process of metabolism and may already be inactivated even before they have any chance of contributing to our body. But that's the harsh reality. And since this is the first time the drug molecules have entered the body and they're already out, okay, we have a term for this phenomenon. This is called the first, well, again, they have to go through this first before going to the blood. There are just some lucky molecules that can go straight, but most of us, if we are to take it orally, we have to go through this route and we have to experience the so-called first pass thing. Hey, you first go through the liver, you have no choice. 
And unfortunately, some of our drug molecules will have to say goodbye. So that means that your drug molecules will not be completely found in the blood because some of them will already be exiting your body even before they go inside. And that is important because we have a term in pharmacokinetics called bioavailability. Okay, I think in this video, I have no intention of giving a more formal term for this, but basically bioavailability refers to how much of the initial drug molecules you took actually successfully enter the blood. Of course, ideally, what you want is 100% bioavailability, meaning every single molecule you took in your body would go to your blood. But of course, this is not going to be possible because if you take the oral route, the first pass effect will get rid of some of that 100%. So you would expect that sometimes drug, drugs that you take would be only 80% bioavailable, 70%. Some of them may even be worse, like some drugs are 5% bioavailable. That means that like 95% are either eliminated via first pass effect or cannot even enter the body. Now, of course, it is up for the researchers and clinicians to decide whether or not drugs with very low bioavailability are still good drugs or they should not be taken orally anymore. If you remember, we can use the IV route because if you use the IV route, there's no need to pass through these membranes because when you inject it straight to the veins, it goes here. So technically speaking, since you don't lose any of the drugs that you injected IV, it will always be 100% bioavailable. But of course, if you imagine real life situations, you can't just like prick everything in your veins, right? And just uh, keep on, keep on uh, like stabbing and stabbing and stabbing people around with needles. That's why we have to sacrifice. We, we acknowledge that the oral route is very convenient, but we have to account for the issues on bioavailability, which is really something that we will not discuss anymore here because that requires a little more of science beyond understanding our body.